Are you getting ready to get into clinic and start your D3 year? And you're not sure how it's gonna be? Stay tuned as we talk to two students who just finished the D3 year, and they're gonna give you all the tips and everything that, uh, that they did to, to survive D3 in dental school. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin on the new dentist podcast show where we talk about getting into dental school, surviving dental school, getting into residency and then life as a new dentist. Be sure that you uh, subscribe down below uh, at my YouTube page, Dr. Darwin Speaks. And then also be sure to uh, hit that notifications button so that you are able to uh, uh, be notified when new videos come out every week. Today, we're gonna to be talking about dental school and getting past the first year, the second year, and now focusing on the, the D3 year, which is probably uh, one of the years that most students really like. We're, we're joined with uh, my buddy's future DDS. You guys wanna introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Terrell Friday, a third year dental student at Tufts Dental School. Uh, and Tyler Brown, uh, I guess we're D4s now. Oh yeah, we're well, D4s, D4s now, yeah. D4s at Tufts uh, <laughs> University School of Dental Medicine, yep. That's cool, that's cool. Well, look guys, let's jump into it because uh, a lot of people are, are looking forward to finishing up uh, these, uh, the second year of dental school and going right into clinic. I know that's one of the big things a lot of people like. So first, let's talk about what you heard about the D3 year before you started. What are some of the things that you heard? Um, I definitely heard uh, a lot of people say, the stress is different. Like, it, 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 you know, you still stress, but the stress is a lot different. Like, a lot of people say that, you know, I guess the virtue of the schedule and, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day, um, operation versus, you know, class versus clinic. But I think that was one of the biggest things. Yeah, another thing was uh, a lot of people told us um, we had been told a lie, you know. <laughs> I think that uh, initially we expect to just kind of be done with classes during our third year. Yeah. Uh, but we still had classes while we were in clinic. Of course, the class load was a lot lesser than, you know, the first two years, but we still had to take classes, but um, it was definitely more clinical based. More clinical based. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys uh, were able to dispel those those myths because you still had classes, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of the, oh, some yeah. tough classes, too. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> it no was joke. It, it was yeah, no joke. Yeah. I, think, I think dental school was more fun because oh, we yeah. were able to be actually interacting with patients, but it was still... Uh, you know, it was still a lot of didactic classes and a lot of, a lot of tests. There was still a lot of tests. So don't let anybody fool you. Right, right, right. All right. So um, what about the things that you liked the most about D3 year? Um, so, so getting back to, you know, us being able to be in clinic, uh, just kind of finding out our groove as actual like practicing clinicians within the school. Um, you know, it, it was great seeing what worked for us, um, you know, what we thought would work, what didn't work, yeah. uh, uh, being able to really, really dive in and, and get that base layer of who we will be as clinicians. Uh, that was, that was great. That was great. Yeah, yeah, I think I liked, um, you know, definitely the patient aspect. You really, like, learn what you learn. You learn what you know and what you really don't know once you're in clinic and, like, I guess you got a little bit more pressure on you, you know, you're, you got a little bit of pressure on you to perform in front of your patient. And, you know, it might be a first time doing a procedure, but you really know what you feel comfortable with and know at least theory-based, like theoretically, you know exactly what to do. And now, you know, what, what you need to put into action or what you need to study for. So, you know, like Tyler said, just coming into your own as a clinician uh, and as like a, you know, how you interact with people and, and you know, kind of grow as a, as a provider, uh, not just a, a hand skill ex expert or, you know, a bookworm. So... Cool, cool. All right. So now the challenges. Let's talk a little bit about the challenges. And, you know, Tufts is the second largest uh, dental school. Uh, we're about to, what, over close to 200. You guys have about 200 classes? Yeah, with, the, with our IS class, we have about 240, 250. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. 200 and, and, and all of those, all of those students were also in, in clinic, right? 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. So almost 250 students. So Let's talk a little bit about some challenges with D3 year uh, okay. that you guys experienced and some of the things that you did to kind of uh, circumvent. Oh, 
So I say um, one thing is just like getting adjusted to clinic and that like the day-to-day of clinic. So, you know, a lot of people or a lot of us haven't worked in dental offices before. We haven't really like, you know, some people haven't worked in customer service where they're used to calling people every day or scheduling people or making sure, you know, even using the Axiom system. So there's like a lot of little nuances about kind of being your own practice owner that, that we're learning. Um, and a lot of people didn't really have that in their mind that they'll have to like go through, you know, it's like, oh, I'm coming to school, I learn how to drill, learn how to fill, I'm gonna go to school, see my patient and go home. Right. But like, you really have to like call your patients, make sure they're coming in, patient might cancel, what are you gonna do during your spare time? Like, is there a come to see I could do right now? There's so many little extra things that stack on top of just doing a class two prep or stack on top of just doing a crown prep or a prep attempt or a group an hour or something like that, so. Yeah, no, and I try to like build off what Terrell said, Oh, we always say, like, you, you have to get surgical, right? And so what we mean by this surgical. is, like, you know, don't let you do other things outside of dental school as well. You know, don't let you have a relationship. Don't let you have a little side project that you have to do. Um, oh, I think. Yeah, that's just one more. Oh. Hey, Doc. Dr. Hayes. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yeah, I think your video went out. Yeah, oh, yeah, I have to switch it up. Go, there you go. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think. What should I? We can see the green. You got a little, little green on the right, top side, right. On right side. On your right okay. side. There. Uh, Back it up a little. There. Oh, you know what it is. Let me. Uh, what is this light? Might be the lighting. Yeah. Bouncing the light off too hard. Right. Okay. Like oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. That's good. Okay. All right, you good. Sorry about that. No, you good. You good. All good. Um, all right, so I'll just start back up. Okay. You were um, talking about relations. Don't have a relationship. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, just getting back to it. Um, you know, Terrell and I, we always say like one big thing about uh being efficient and being successful within dental school is just you know being surgical and just like really, really breaking down everything that you have to do and like don't let you have other side project that you have going on. Don't let you have a relationship that you have to, you know, pour a lot of, not even a lot of attention, even a little bit of attention still is going to take a lot from you because you're so busy with doing everything else. And like Terrell said, you know, the actual part about being in clinic, that has so many different layers where it's so, okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to work on this denture. I have to review, you know, the denture procedure before I go in. So that's an extra hour added onto my day that I have to, you know, make sure that I'm, I'm familiar about what's going on and things of that nature. So really just being surgical, making sure that you're, you have all your competencies uh, completed and you're getting all of that exposure, just becoming the best clinician that you can be. I think that, you know, getting into that groove and understanding that you can't get out of that groove. You know, if, if, if you want to relax, you almost have to schedule your time to relax. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's to that point, especially if you want to be super, super efficient within clinics. So it, it wasn't hard, but it was definitely something that, you know, we had to get a little bit more used to. For sure. Now, now, what about, talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, you guys at Tufts are second largest dental school as far as, you know, number of students per class and how, how that played into some of the challenges that you might have had. And, and so, you know, let, let's, let's be honest, you know, not everybody, like I said, is as surgical. So it wasn't a problem, you know, with, with Terrell and I, I mean, you know, I think that we looked so far in the future that we were just like, okay, we're booking everything. Like I have a patient who can come in three weeks from now. I'm booking that right now. And I'm calling patients constantly, constantly, constantly. So, so we, we stayed on top of it. And if you're able to stay on top of it, you know, it won't be a problem, you know? And I think a lot of people, when they, they look at Tufts, they're like, oh, will I get the attention that I need? Will I get XXX? Um, and I will be honest, you know, it's during the actual uh, three hour, yeah, the three hour period that you have your patient, you know, of course the PC is running around, but you know, if you go to the PC before the session or after the session, they're always willing to help you and really put in that, that effort to show you what you need to do and kind of coach you through things. So as long as you're, you know, organized, it, it actually wasn't that much of a problem. Yeah. I, th- I think, uh, you know, just to piggyback off that a little bit. Um, I think just being prepared. So if you go in there and you, you look competent, you know, like you look like you prepared, 
you go in there, you talk to a professor that you want to work with before the session starts. Um, and like little things like that, instead of trying to find someone mid session, you know, you don't necessarily know exactly what everyone else has. On them. It might be on the board, but like somebody might cancel. So anything can happen where, okay, this is a very complex case. The professor actually has to sit with them because this is something that, you know, you know, pretty much nobody in the clinic can do, but the professor and they're just trying to walk people through. So you might not have as much leeway every day, but like, like Tyler said, if you put it in their head beforehand, yeah. that like you're someone that they, they need to keep in mind throughout this session. Oh, you're someone that is, this might be your first time doing this procedure. Oh, uh, you might just not be comfortable with this type of procedure or they were short on staff or something like that. Like you put it in their mind so that they can prepare as well. You know, they're a person just like us. So you can't get mad when, you know, they get locked in that trying to really help someone or they get locked into some personal thing they have going on or a letter right they have to write their PC. Like there's a lot going on. So. All right. All right. That sounds good. And actually it's a great segue to the, uh, the last question, which deals with some of the things you guys t touched about, which was advice. Knowing what you know now and what you've gone through these last 366, 67, 68 days, uh, what, what advice would you have for uh, those that are uh, coming in, entering the D3 year? Any advice for D3 year? I would say, um, hmm, that's a good one. <laughs> I really say, like, in enjoy the freedom but don't get lost in the freedom one just because like you don't have to be in class you don't have to be you don't have to be in class you don't have to be in clinic as much um little things like that um but you do get a little bit more freedom to start enjoying your time mm -hmm. so i think it, it's it's beneficial to start like developing the lifestyle that you want to see yourself having after school because you can start doing it now without having the extra, a lot of the extra things or it's not costing you money to do a lot of the things, or it's not costing you time out of the clinic to do a lot of the things. Like, start building that structure. Start going to the gym early. Start, like, picking up that hobby after clinic now because you might not want to pick up the hobby when you're after clinic, got the you know. If you if you have a kid now, obviously, it's a little different. But, you know, when you have kids, it's something extra. When you have, you know, another side business, it's something extra, you know. So when you have a little bit of money to actually go out and spend, it's going to be something extra. So... You know, just kind of, kind of get those, get those habits locked in now. Um, yeah, and and just learn as much as you can before you hit the clinic, because it's gonna make your process in clinic that much, that much smoother, that much easier. Good. What about you? What about you, Tyler? I would say, uh, I think that everybody should grab some type of notebook. I think everybody should grab, you know, even an app called Day One, and really kind of like as crazy as like journal your way through your experience i think that you should really use your third year to find out what type of clinician that you think you want to be get some type of idea because even now what terrell and i are going through you know now we're considering residencies um and granted due, due to the covid situation there's a lot that a lot of different variables that we're not able to control but like um initially we were both set on becoming you know going straight out just going straight to work like that was our idea, but now because of COVID, we have some things changed up. That's always going to happen. But um, it, we were confident in the fact that, you know what, we think that after dealing with patients that we're confident enough to eventually be practice owners one day. So we started doing business, taking business classes and doing little things like that. Um, and I think that sometimes, and of course, don't live in the future too much, but when you have some type of idea of where you want to be in the future, it makes your navigation through the current situation a lot easier and a lot more fulfilling because you know, okay, I'm doing this because I want to be here. I'm doing this because I want to be here. When you're kind of just traveling aimlessly without any real goals or any like real vision, it, it gets a little, uh, I don't want to say you'll work less hard, but I think that you're more motivated when you know where you want to go. So just keep that in mind. Uh, journal, um, and, and I think that, you know, in a couple of years, when we look back on everything that we went through, when we were talking to ourselves in these journals, whatever it may be, really self-reflecting, I think it will be kind of enjoyable to see where we were versus where we'll be in the future. So, so. Yeah, man, that sounds great. Well, I'm glad to hear that you guys are considering uh, residencies uh, for this upcoming D, after this uh, D4 year yes. uh, for the class of 2021. That'll be great. Yeah, um, and you, you guys that are listening and watching, uh, we're going to have a separate uh, episode about residency. So make sure you st uh, stay tuned and, and uh, check out that video as well. Well, future DDS, 
or in your case, DMDs. <laughs> you guys are uh, getting close, man. Getting close. <laughs> yeah, Knocking man. on that door hard. It's hard now. Yeah. So uh, D4 year is coming up. And um, uh, any other plans for D4 year or, how, or things that you guys are kind of thinking about doing? I know you mentioned residency, but uh, anything as, as it relates to this year as you preparing to graduate? Um, um, really just experience, uh, really grabbing as much as we can. You know, yeah. I think that, you know, I'm sure students who are in dental school watching this right now, I'm sure your school is providing you with uh, free CEs. Um, you know, watch them, watch those videos, you know, really just embed yourself into the, uh, the, the world of dentistry. And that's what we're trying to do, especially in these trying times. Um, it's very easy to get sucked into to a lot of other things, such as video games or whatever it may be. But um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we're really just going to, try to get as many reps as possible and the reps that we can't get in the clinic we're going to get outside of the clinic via different videos different podcasts and really just starting to plan out uh you know our future good good yeah. well those of you are watching and uh and are listening as well make sure you plan out your 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 success exactly. um success is not something that just happens it's it's something that has to be created and it sounds like you guys are still on that path uh, yeah. and doing well and creating and creating it. So future DDS, thank you so much for sharing um, your experience mm -hmm. about surviving the D3 year. Uh, and you guys that are watching, if you have questions, be sure to post them down here at the end of the video. Uh, also, you guys can um, um, shoot me an email at, at newdentistcoach at gmail.com, newdentistcoach at gmail.com. Also check out this new website that we just posted up, put up, and uh, you got some things there that you can check out. Future DDS, we'll see you in the D4 year. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, Thank you, Dr. Dom. You're welcome. Peace.